Hello and welcome to the Bankers Tech Talk video series, keeping up with developments in the fintech space. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor at The Banker, and my guest this week is Adam Gibson, Vice President of SkyMind Global Ventures and AI Ecosystem Builder. Adam, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So what does SkyMind Global Ventures do that differentiates yourself in the artificial intelligence space? SkyMind Global Ventures is the only dedicated AI ecosystem builder, which means we focus only on building out AI capabilities within companies, and we do that, we do that in two ways. One is our AI application launchpad, which means talent development and open source software, allowing developers to customize and build AI applications cheaply and effectively. The other is in investing in promising AI startups. Okay. And then how does your technology make an impact, let's say, within banking? Our AI launchpad is a foundation. To, and what it does is it allows uh, bank, banking you know, software teams, tech teams, to build applications easily, faster, and it allows them to innovate in, in areas where it might otherwise be hard to. Okay, but what areas of banking really is being disrupted by AI at the moment? So in this case, customer support is a big one. So helping, helping banks understand how to scale support. The other I would say is in risk management. You know, so the, the ability to actually uh, evaluate loan applications faster, the ability to actually understand, you know, what the bad guys are doing next to try to steal money from people, identity theft, things of that nature. So what benefits can banks really gain by applying your technology? So we make it easier to innovate. You know, so banks have problems, a lot of problems in de de developing and deploying new technology. You know, so for example, they have legacy, they have mm -hmm. legacy systems, uh, they have compliance, and generally, they sometimes they can't get the best talent, mm. right? Like so, you know, by by using our by using our software and our ecosystem, you know, for example, we can help them train up their existing talent that they have. Like so, they have engineers who have investment, you know, knowledge in banking, right? And they they want to continue to be in the space because it's it's where they can differentiate themselves. We can help them add machine learning as a new capability into their existing understanding of IT world. The other is in compliance. Because they provide, because we provide an AI platform, we actually help them understand uh, how to comply with local laws, GDPR, things like that. And then finally, we make it easier to innovate by by using our open source software. It gives them the ability. It gives developers the ability to customize and build applications faster, and it allows them to build to to build things in in a cheaper way. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of challenges, I guess, to uh, uh, applying mm -hmm. AI within mm -hmm. their, let's say, legacy systems. Mm -hmm. How can, what are those challenges, and how can they overcome them? So those challenges typically are integration. You know, so you know, you have you have about probably three generations of, of software sitting in a bank. You know, you're, you're still sitting with COBOL generally. Mm. You know, that's been around since the '50s, right? You know, now it's Java, uh, which you know we heavily invest in as well, like enterprise technology, right? Like, so we make it easier to integrate. And then, you know, since since we're not focused only on the kind of the AI innovation, mm. uh, but we also focus on today's AI. Right, and we can help t the banks also tell the difference between good and bad AI. Mm. There's a lot of hype, and so it's really hard to separate, you know, what's real and what's fake. Okay, how do you do that? Uh, so a lot of what it comes down to, so our again, our talent development, mm. and also because we provide a baseline framework, that foundation allows them to understand how to reliably build AI. And we because we pre what what will say we pre-build best practices mm. for the developers, so they don't have, they don't they don't have to build their understanding from scratch. Okay, excellent. So my last question is really about why you've decided to open your headquarters here in London. So London is one of the most innovative kind of capitals for tech. Uh, it's also a very business-friendly environment, so regulation is very friendly to new technology. And it's it, the I'd say the population here quickly adopts new technology and understands it. Mm. Uh, you know, the education system here is world class. You have a lot of world class universities in a very small little, you know, kind of very, very little small slice of the world. Right, and so that you know, especially in STEM, uh, the the foundations here are very good. And finally, I would say the time zone. Uh, you know, we can do business, and you know, we're as a truly global company. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to do business with Asia. We need to do it with the United States, and we need to do it with Europe. And so, the only way to do that is typically going to be in London. Okay, and uh, maybe I'll ask one more question, mm -hmm. which is really around you've recently rebranded. Yep. Why have you done that? Uh, because we want to move beyond software. You know, so we want to we want to show that we're you know we're not we want to show that yes we we've, we've been doing these things the last couple of years, but now we want to move to investment. We want to move to showing that you know we're a global company, right? Like so, putting global in the name I think kind of helped a little bit. And ventures says you know ventures generally signals investment, mm -hmm. which is a fairly new area for us, but it's something we've been doing the last couple of years. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much yeah, for your insights, you. Adam. Thank you.